uh, say a few words on behalf of uh, Enrico, who, like I mentioned earlier, could not make it. Uh, so once again, he just wants to thank everyone for really coming down. And this is a very strong collaboration between HP and Intel for really trying to uh, butterfly the IT industry. And as you can see, he has all this written down. Uh, he was very eager to join us, but he's here with us in spirit. Uh, Intel and HP are strong partners and collaborating a lot in different activities in the IT industry. Uh, they have decided to join me to organize this series to share with them, uh, with you guys, actually their commitment into the open source and in particular the open stuff. Um, HP and Intel are platinum members of the foundation and both hold a seat in the board of directors. Intel's developers work with the community to expose Intel's hardware technologies to OpenStack software modules and to extend the OpenStack technology to improve security, compliance, high availability, manageability, performance, and high-end user experience. So without further more, I'm going to give the mic to Etienne. Etienne, are you ready? Hello? Yes, hello everyone. Hello, uh, uh, everyone found out. So yes, let me just take the mic right now. I'm showing my screen. So uh, let me just uh, myself. So I am Etienne Quinn in the uh, EMEA uh, team. So I am I'm French, uh, as maybe you can hear. And uh, I am sick. Why well, know I lost my voice. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we can cancel this event because it is very very important, and I'm sure it will be. Um, very, very interesting for you. Uh, so today, we are talking about Alien Dev Platform. So we are talking about application, about apps, about Cloud Foundry. So let me just ask you a question. So I have just a few questions just before to start, uh, just to know if you have seen my first webinar, just to know if we are talking about the same thing or if I have to speak, uh, maybe to, to do some recall uh, about uh, my first uh, webinar. So the poll is open right now, so you can vote uh, if you if you see it or not. Uh, oh, great, 30%, so I am happy about that. Uh, okay, that's great. Okay, so let me do, to do a, a quick a quick recall, maybe just to explain a few things, just to be sure we are on the same page. Of course, we are talking about it today. Okay, so I am a developer. Uh, right now in HP, I am more uh, selling products, but for you, uh, I will be a developer uh, again. A de the, the developer is back inside me. So today we are developing an app, okay, as you know. So the main problem for a developer uh, like me, it's an application. It's not only code. You know, code is not enough. That's why when I want to develop a new application, I have to code, of course, and I like that. I love code, but unfortunately, it's not enough. So I need a network, okay, a database to trust my data, a middleware to run to execute my code, a server to host the code, security, extra, extra. And the main problem is, as a developer, I just want to be focused on my code. That's it. And the other problem is when I am coding, my code is depending on the infrastructure. So if the infrastructure is changing, I have to change my code. And that's bad, very, very bad point for me. Okay? So if the server is different, if the network is different, the database maybe is not the same database, I have to change my code. And I don't want to do that anymore. That's why today we are coding an application. And I will show you how it's possible to code an application, a cloud native application, uh, with not depending on the infrastructure. Okay, this point is very, very important. So today, uh, it's, it's live, live demo, live coding. That's why there is maybe a lot of problems, a lot of fail, etc. So this uh, counter, this counter, is there to, to see at the end of the webinar if I am still alive because I'm, I'm dying, I am sick. If I am still alive at the end of this uh, webinar, uh, we have this counter just to know how many fails, how many success. Okay? So just be, 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 be confident. I hope it will be a lot of success. So all, just to know if we are about the same language, uh, what is your favorite language if you are a developer? 
if you are not, maybe just choose uh, as you want. <laughs> but if you are a developer, just let me know if it's more PHP. Maybe you are coding a lot of co a lot of languages, but just the first one, okay? Uh, okay, great. So you are more PHP, okay? Okay. Okay, okay, so you are more web application, etc. And this is a good choice, honestly, it's a good choice. Uh, not GS, of course, the GS, I love that. But okay, 50% uh, PHP. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, so today I have a good news for you. Uh, we are developing with PHP. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think it's a good, uh, good idea uh, because you love PHP and me as well. So, round number one. So, the, the first demo, first demo. Uh, we are starting very light, okay? Starting very easy. So, uh, we just need to push application, okay? That's, it, it seems easy, okay? So, let me show it's very easy. So, if to deploy application, what do you do? First thing, you need an application, okay? So I have one, I have a web application, very easy. Let me go inside. This is my application, okay? So it's PG, HTML, some pictures, and that's it, okay? Let me go in there, where is my pictures? So I have just one file, home.php, okay? Let me open it. Um, well, sorry, that is home.php, okay? This is my website. So if you are a, a PHP developer, you know what I am talking about. Uh, because this, of course, PHP tags, so very easy as a classical application, like a traditional. This my uh, sentence, so this is a great app for uh, Be My App, okay? Hello. Okay, that's it. Maybe a smiley, because as a developer, I love a smiley. Uh, so okay, the app is smiley. Uh, okay, so this is a great app for be my app. Okay, and another PHP code. So this is a cloud native code. Okay, uh, I know that's crazy, but this is a cloud native uh, code because basically, uh, when you are develop when you are deploying your application, the platform uh, is creating for you a lot of variables and their environment variables. Okay, so with PHP, we can just get the variables, okay? So in this case, uh, I am getting uh, the port, the local port, uh, where is uh, executing my application. So I want to know, as an application, because my application is smart, I want to know myself, okay, which code, which port, excuse me, which port is using uh, to execute my code. So by this very, very simple um, command function, I am displaying the local port of my container, okay? So, I am saving it. Okay, so now my application is almost ready. What I want it to put. So for that, I have the file, stackato.yml. It's a manifest, I have a manifest, to describe what kind of application I want to deploy. So let me open it, just to show you what it is. Exactly. I am saying, okay, my application is auto-described. So my application is in this folder, okay? I want this space as of a disk space. I want this amount of memory. I want this name, my app. And I am using this framework. I am using PHP. So I am just telling to the platform, to platform A, okay, I want my code. My code needs this kind of uh, elements to work. You can do everything you want. Uh, you can, I don't know, it's maybe a PHP server, Apache. Uh, you can host where you want. I just want this kind of elements, and I hope it's working. Okay. So now, I just need to do alien login, of course, because I, I need to <laughs> to sign in uh, my uh, Cloud Foundry platform. So, of course, with, it's very very secure. <laughs> So now I am connecting uh, to my uh, Cloud Foundry platform. Okay, I am in uh, just a few minutes. Okay, perfect, I'm in. Right now I just need to type alien push, and that's it. So just re remember, it's just code. So I, I, I have just uh, my uh, web application, and I want to deploy it to World Wide Web. 
So if I am deploying the application, you can use it from your laptop. So it's it's crazy. Uh, you like to deploy from current directory? Yes, please. It's using the file, the file I uh, show you. Okay. The application is deployed with this URL. So basically, if you are using uh, mycompany.com, uh, CrowdFunnel is creating for you a new URL, a new domain name, uh, myapplication.yourcompany.com. So I don't need to manage the network. It's managing the network for you. So OK, it's not bad. It's just for test. So I don't need to set a, a very, very good URL. And right now, it's creating the application for me. OK, so I just need to wait. Uh, I, I am good in this part. Just need to wait. So let me, I am waiting. OK, yeah, so it's creating services. OK, do I need the services? Uh, maybe no. Create services to bind. No. OK. And OK, perfect. So, so maybe you can see it. It's a it's starting the application. And the next stage is to see if the application is working well. Okay. So basically, let me just to do a quick uh, recall. I just creating a simple application, PHP. Okay. I'm just creating a manifest. So you have to do, uh, you have to write this file. If tomorrow you are using CloudFormly, don't don't forget you have to write a file, a manifest to describe your application. And after that, you are just to type CloudFormly or Alien, push, and that's it. So let me copy the code, the URL. I am opening a browser, a real web browser. I paste the code, as you can see. I'm waiting a little because maybe not refreshing uh, on yours. So let me wait. Um, maybe I just to type enter. We are checking if it's working. Okay. Suspense. In my application online. Yes. As you can see, maybe on your screen. There is a text. This is a great app for be my app with the local port uh, with uh, where I'm listening. OK, so we can do something right. I am just copying the code in the chat system. And you can maybe test it on your side. So just to be sure it's not a fake, uh, <laughs> my application was on my laptop. And right now, my application is on the web. So basically, uh, as a developer, I don't need IT administrator. Right now, I can do it myself. I don't need no one. I don't need to speak to someone else. Okay, that's a good point. So let me just show you some slides to to move on. So just a quick explanation. So what we did, we just write a sentence. We just write the code get on on the uh, variables environments. So let me show you more variables right here, as you can see. Let me draw a beautiful arrow. Okay. So there is a lot of variables. Okay. So this is just a few examples. Uh, for example, you can display, you, you, you can show uh, which host is executing, where is my application, uh, what kind of services I have, uh, where, where, what is the domain, what is the URL, how many instances I have. Okay. So this, this point is very important because your application, your cloud native application uh, has to be smart. So your application has to discover Okay, what is available for me? So now it's not a question from the server. The question is from your application. Your application has to ask uh, what I have to deploy myself, what I have to work, okay? So that's why it's very, very important. Okay, load. Let me move on. How it's possible, how it works. Okay, it's very, very easy. Uh, basically, I have a cloud native application, okay? So as you can see, I did it, and a, con a Docker container is creating for me uh, by the platform. Okay, so this is a very very simple application. Okay, right now we are developing a more complex application because what is interesting is to use database. So where is the database? Database is 
in the, so the, in the, in the platform there is your code and services. A database, it's like a service. Okay, it's like a file system, a file sharing, uh, API, etc. Okay, I can ask services to the platform. Because in this, this you know what I mean, if you need a lot of application, okay, you have to wait to ask for a web server. I agree with you. But if you are asking for a database as well, it's a nightmare, okay? So this is a good sample. If, if I am waiting for a database, I have to wait, okay? I have to wait a lot because the question is what kind of database do you want? Uh, okay, I can set for you an instance on this server. Uh, it's not easy to access. I have to set the good the good rights for you, etc. So it's, 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 a, it's a waste of time. So now, let me show you. It's a database. So, same question, okay? So let me go inside. So, if I want to uh, set a database, I just need to add some command lines, okay? Let me show you with this slide. Right now, with a traditional application, I know everything about my name, okay? Because in PHP, it's very, very it's simple. I just need to set uh, a function, and I just need to write down uh, the host, the login, and password. Okay, very simple. But with Scratch Formula, I have no information about my database. Okay, that's why I need add uh, or three more uh, commands, three more lines. Uh, I show you. Why? So the first one, as you know, because now you know this functionality, I need to ask, okay? So right there, I am asking, okay, what kind of services do you have? Okay, so get environ, get env, vcap services, okay? I am asking to the platform, what do you have for me? After that, JSON system, so I am decoding the JSON, and I am using the database. In this sample, okay, there is a, MySQL database. So I am asking, okay, you have a MySQL database. I am getting the first one, as you can see. I'm not a very good uh, drawer, but <laughs> okay, I want the first one, number zero. And after that, I am using the name, login, and password. Okay? So right now, with a traditional application, I know the information. Okay? So it's very easy. But with a cloud native application, you have to ask. You have to, your application has to ask, okay, what is the login? What is the password, etc., etc. Okay? Not very hard to understand. And that's why, let me show you our beauty application. Uh, let me, it was drawing. Uh, perfect. So, basically, let me just open uh, my backup file. <laughs> Okay, this, up. so let me open maybe the file we did. Okay, perfect, this one, a great app for, okay, remember. Right now, I am adding more lines. So, remember this one. I am asking, okay, what do you have for me? After that, I am decoding the service. And I am asking for the credentials. That's it. And I am displaying the service name, login, password, host, and port. And now I can use a database in my cloud native application. So let me show you. So I publish this new code. So when you want to update your application, you can do that very, very easy and without interruption with Scratch Foundry. I just need to type alien push again, so it's the same command line, and waiting, of course, answering to some questions. Like to deploy, yes, <coughs> it's using the manifest file. It's updating my application automatically, so it's okay. Yeah. I have already this application, so I can do an update. Comparing application, just to upload uh, the new files, okay, that's it. Bind existing services to my app. No, 
but create services to bind to my app? Yes, because now we want to use a database. Okay, so if I want to use a database, I am asking to the Crash Foundry server, what do you have for me? So the question is very, very simple. What kind of service? So I can choose the kind of database. Uh, maybe I want a MongoDB, okay, a Microsoft SQL, a RabbitMQ for messaging, or a PostgreSQL. So if you like PHP, you like MySQL server, yes. <laughs> so now I am asking for a MySQL database. The name, so I can choose free MySQL, okay. I am choosing uh, maybe MySQL B my app. Perfect. And it's creating for me a database and it's binding this database to my application. Okay, so this is a good point. So we just need it. So as you can see it's I don't need uh, I don't need to search. I don't need to the right uh, URL, the right port, uh, I don't need to open my firewall, etc. Et so this is very, very good. Uh, okay, my new application is deployed with a zero downtime Swift. So this is very good because my user can see the change of the embed. Uh, okay, so let me copy, paste, but it's the same, uh, the same URL. I don't know, oop. Here we go. I can see service name, so this uh, random number, okay, to to set my service name, to to describe my uh, new uh, database. Login, this is a login to connect to my database. Password, host of the database, and the local port. <coughs> so now, as you can see, uh, my application is ready to be connected uh, to the database. So this is very, very great. So let me show you a few things. Maybe the dashboard. Okay, I'm showing you the dashboard because I am a developer, so I am using the command line. But if you are, uh, I don't be an IT administrator. The IT administrator can use a dashboard, a web dashboard. It's better because uh, you don't need to code, <laughs> and you can see okay who is using uh, Cloud Foundry using the LF platform, uh, how many applications uh, they are deploying, etc. Uh, so let me connect to the dashboard. Yep. Not a lot of people know this dashboard, so it is good to show you. And check maybe if the database is, uh, is well created also. So by this point, uh, we can check if my application so we know that, but maybe we can check uh, the, the database. Okay, so I'm in the applications uh, tab, and I can see my app. Okay, so I hope it's refreshing uh, on your side. If I am clicking on it, I have all the information needed. So as you can see, let me just apply show you. Okay, and we start action. Stop it. Okay. I can go up to the instances and services. So you're going to services. I can see a MySQL server right there is ready for me with this name. And that's it. Okay. So if I need to do some stuff, for example, my application is, is becoming very, very famous. I can add uh, more instances myself. Okay? One, two, three, four. And a auto scaling mode. Okay? So this is very, very efficient. So if I want two instances, I can set, okay, I want minimum two because my application is very famous. And as you can see, another instance is creating for me an open running. So the load balancer is. Uh, working well, uh, a new Docker container is creating for me with my simple application. So right now, if I am rough page, as you can see, maybe the okay, 46, I hope it's changing. 
me check. Yes, 53. Okay, 53, 56, 53 again. And let's check. Why is it changing? Because I have two instances. So when it's on C's, one uh, lookup port. So of course, uh, with uh, the load balancer, it's a round robin mode, uh, each uh, customer's uh, visitors are getting a new uh, instance. Okay, so maybe I am getting this uh, the first one or maybe the second one uh, to absorb, uh, to, to get the, the charge. Okay, so I think it's a good point. Choosing uh, because application, okay? so it's so it's for mail, but for you want to develop JS application, a Ruby application, a Python, okay, a Java application. So it's working exactly with the same way. If you want to develop a cloud native application, you have to do some stuff. First one, just okay. Why? Because I'm creating the same code for every platform, the same code, the same, co same code for every test. Okay, not a debug test, a special test, etc. No, just one code. And to describe my action. <coughs> That's why I define dependencies. So it was the manifest file. Okay, remember uh, the manifest file. Uh, where I, I said the information like the framework, uh, where is my application, the amount of memory extern. Okay, so I need to define dependencies. Okay, I want a PHP framework, I want a .NET, I want a Node.js, a Java framework extern. After that, I have a configuration file. Okay, very easy, and I need to ask services needed, so a database, one kind of database, etc. And that's it. My job as a developer is done right here, right there. The next step is the job from the uh, platform, okay? Platform and create a release of my application because everything uh, everything is there, everything is already set in. So I don't need to do something else, okay? Uh, the platform knows your code, the platform knows services needed, platform knows frameworks, so that's it. Why not? The platform can create a container for you. So the platform is taking care of uh, the container creation for you. That's a good point. And of course, remember, uh, to connect your instance, your application to the right service, the right database. Okay. And so, just, uh, don't, don't, don't forget, it's very important, know that inside your application. Okay. Because as you can see, if my first instance is not working well, okay, I can delete it and create in a new one. Okay, there is no backup on restore for a cloud native application. Okay, so if you have data to store, please store it in a service. Okay, store it in the database. Okay, no local data. It's very important. That's a, a new, uh, a new way to develop. Okay. And that it, the application is able uh, to the visitors, to the customers, and you can uh, consume API, etc., etc. So go to the site uh, 12factor.net. I am sure you know this website, maybe, uh, but it's very, very interesting uh, to know uh, the big, uh, the big draw to know uh, what is a cloud friendly, a cloud native application. Okay, so don't forget uh, to visit this website. Uh, this website is in French, uh, in Italian, I guess, uh, in English, etc. So, let's move on. As I said, <coughs> it's creating for you uh, a container. So, what is inside a container? It's easy. If you are pushing a PHP code, it's writing for you a container with a Apache server and the PHP library. So this native, okay? If you are pushing a Java code, it's writing for you a Tomcat server inside as a container. But tomorrow, maybe you want to develop your own language, uh, your own libraries, uh, maybe an Apache, but a special version of Apache. So how to create your own container? That's the question. 
And you can do that with a custom build pack. So with a custom build pack, you can choose, okay, I want uh, to upload my code, but I want to use this kind of server, okay? So I want uh, the uh, uh, Docker container creation with this kind of server and with my special features. So we can do that. Let me show you how it works. Okay, yes, for example, let me open it. Uh, sorry, let me open it a bit back. So for example, this build pack, okay, I hope it's refreshing on your side. This build pack is hosting, uh, is hosted by, uh, it's, it's very easy, it's hosting by Git, okay? So if you have a Git project, of, if there is a, a Git project uh, you love, you can use it, okay? You don't need to download it, okay? You can use it directly. So if I want to use this special PHP build pack from Git, I can do that. Okay, and let me show you. So I am uh, editing my manifesto file right there. In this file, I was specifying, okay, I am using the form of PHP, so you can use the native PHP server. But why not, I don't use, I don't want to use this uh, server. I want to use this build pack, okay? So please uh, do a for me, uh, a, a new web server, a new container with this server, okay? So just to save it. And alien push, we are testing. Okay, so same question. Uh, maybe you want to deploy, okay, yes, of course, using manifestify. And as you can see, okay, it's using this build pack right now. So my Cloud Foundry application, okay, is downloading automatically uh, this build pack from Git and using it uh, inside my container. Okay, it's magic. So okay, we don't need to deploy it. I can stop right there. But let me move on. Okay, so this is just a few samples. So if you want to use maybe uh, another build pack for Node.js, Ruby, PHP, Go, Python, your build pack, your special build pack, the company build pack, a secure build pack, etc., etc., you can do that, okay? So finally, a cloud foundry platform is unlimited, okay? So it's not only for this kind of uh, code, but you, if, if it's a web application, okay, it's unlimited, okay? So don't trust the people who say, uh, okay, yes, but it's limited. <laughs> no, it's not, okay? So this is simple, uh, actively, so natively you can use all these kind of frameworks, languages, elements, database, etc. But of course, as it says, uh, you can add uh, your own build pack, so you can add more code, uh, more framework, uh, more web server if you want, okay? It's not a problem. New poll, if everyone is still there. <laughs> Are you a Microsoft developer? That's a good question. Maybe sometimes, maybe often, or I don't know. Maybe you like that. Maybe sometimes you have to use uh, Microsoft. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> not bad, 50, 50%. Uh, okay, it's changing. 50% for never right now. 60 for never. Okay, so you are not very Microsoft uh, fan. So I don't know if I have to continue. Okay, it's changing. Thank you. Thank you for everyone. Maybe please, sometimes or often, maybe. Add some information. Okay. okay, that's not bad. Okay, so we are talking about Microsoft. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, why? Because it's very, very interesting to know uh, with HP development platform, you can use uh, Microsoft technologies. Okay? We are the first one to do that. It's not easy to just because Microsoft is not very, very a Cloud Foundry a partner a Cloud Foundry member, but in a big company, in big business, we continue the HP.NET application, uh, C Sharp, etc. So yes, uh, .NET application works with Cloud Foundry, okay? 
So basically, it was, is uh, this the cloud foundry architecture? Okay, so you have a Linux DA. Let me just show you with a pen. Up, you have Linux DA. This part is just to uh, host the containers. Okay, so when you are pushing code like that, okay, it's creating for you a container on hosted by the Linux DA. Okay, I am a very very good drawer. Uh, so Basically, this working only with Linux application like uh, PHP, Apache, uh, Java, etc. So, if you want to use uh, Microsoft uh, containers, we added, and that's a good thing, the new DA only for Windows. <coughs> so, this VM is working for Windows. So, it's working exactly the same way when you are pushing a Microsoft code, writing for you a Microsoft container. Okay, called Prison, and basically it's uh, it's a small IIS. Okay, it's a small Microsoft web server. So we did that for the Microsoft part and also for the services because, as you know, um, inside services you can uh, set uh, SQL Server, MongoDB, etc. But you can also set a Microsoft SQL Server natively. So it's another VM only to host the Microsoft server. Okay. So let me show you with a demo. Yeah, I this uh, to show you yes uh, or administrator for deeper to a Microsoft database. It's it's not very easy. Uh, in fact it's not easy at all. Uh, but with Cloud Foundry on HP it's it's easier. Okay, right now it's easier. And let me show you how it's possible. So I am using my studio, so people love this tool. Uh, if you are a developer, of course, my developer. If you are not, maybe you hate this tool, but you can develop uh, for Node.js, a lot of languages. So it's, it's uh, let me open my Microsoft project. Okay, this is my project. Okay, so there is. Files. Well, it's a Microsoft uh, development, so it's it's a nightmare. Uh, so let me maybe show you uh, a page. Okay, this is the main page. Um, uh, okay, I think the same text. This is a great app for be my. Okay, this <laughs> uh, Don't forget this my name, please. And that's it. Okay, so I'm developing my. It's a very very classical application, uh, HP, Net, uh, HTML, etc. So now, for Microsoft developer, I need to change some information. So the web.config is the point where is my um, where is my database. Okay. So if I want to connect uh, my web application, my Microsoft application to database, I need to set this file. Okay. So, as you can see, if I want to set hard code, <coughs> I need to know the database. But with the Cloud Foundry platform, now you know. Uh, I don't know, I have no information to the database uh, before the deployment. That's why I need to change it. Let me just apply command line. And I need to put it by some information. So, basically, server. This environment variable. Okay. So to prefix my database, database okay, with the Comptoso University, and this is the variables. Okay, remember in PHP, get environment, vcap services, and after that, I am decoding the JSON. Okay, with Microsoft, it's almost the same things. I am using the variables environment like that. So I am just setting hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag uh, password, hashtag username, hashtag name. Okay, uh, that's it. So now, directly from Visual Studio, but I can do that from Eclipse. From Eclipse, if you have more Java, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so from Eclipse or Visual Studio, I just to crack, to click on my project, click on Publish to Cloud Foundry. Okay, so I'm waiting for the refreshing, and. Some questions are asking to me. Okay. <coughs> uh, what we did with the command line, it's exactly the same thing. 
Okay, so I need to log in my uh, Cloud Foundry. I need to ask to some question. Okay, remember the manifest file. So uh, the amount of memory I want, uh, the name of my application and the uh, URL, so the domain name, the access, number of instances, and that's it. Okay, the news. Yeah, the new thing from uh, Microsoft is we can build locally the application if I want, okay? So remember with uh, Cloud Foundry, not with PHP of course, but with Cloud Foundry, uh, the compilation is doing online, okay, by the platform. Right now with Microsoft, you can do the compilation uh, from your laptop and the final project is pushing online, okay? Or you can choose, okay, no, I don't want to compile on my laptop, but I want the platform uh, compile the code form. Okay, just need to set publish and waiting. That's it. So basically, it's uploading all the projects for me, the Microsoft project. Okay, and it's creating for me a new web server, a new container inside Microsoft uh, server. Creating a new container with uh, IIS inside, and that's it. Okay, so it, it's it's not fast. Let me with the uh, dashboard, okay, so it's loading as you can university, it's uploading. It's not fast, uh, we, 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 we lose it because as you know, my soft, I don't know why it's, it's a nightmare because it's creating a lot of stuff, it's uploading the file, it's, I don't know, creating the AI, it is booting uh, something, it's hiding the framework, uh, .NET, etc. If you like that, honestly, I, I like my laptop, but I have to say it's it, it's not very very fast. Okay, so okay, let me wait uh, and maybe we can uh, check it during this time. Okay, while it's deploying. So what we did were to do a application. Basically, we just change the web.config file, okay, uh, just to set the connection uh, string, okay, the connection system to connect my application to the platform, okay. So I set the host name, the port of my database port, uh, the name, the username. So the name is the, basically the instance, okay, remember, and username and password. And that's it. Okay, so right now with this kind of information, uh, it's working for cloud native application. So you can take this application, upload to another cloud foundry platform. Okay, it's not maybe not an HP platform, another cloud foundry platform like Pivotal, and it will uh, it will be working well. Let me just move this up, and I am done with the mic after that. Um, just to know the compatibility, the requirements. So we are using SQL Server 2012, 2014, uh, SP1. You can use CloudFoundry.net version, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So let me check if the application is up or a lot, as I said, a lot to my. So maybe it's it's working. Please view application. University dot mycompany.com and I hope my Microsoft uh, web application is working well. It's not easy because if you try but to deploy a Microsoft application uh, it's a nightmare for everyone. But as you can see right now it's working well. So without Microsoft IT administrator without no one, I deployed my first web uh, Microsoft application. Okay, it's a great app from my app. So that's a good news. That's a very, very good news. Uh, okay, so one six. The, the main question is how can I dominate uh, the world with Cloud Foundry? Okay, because finally it's great. I, I need, uh, I don't need to speak to one one because I'm a developer, so I don't like to speak to other people, uh, except you, of course, guys. <laughs> um, but how can I dominate the world with Cloud Foundry? That's the main question. Okay, uh, so I would like to do something fun with you. Okay, to, to just before the, the uh, I would like to develop. 
web as not a web application. Game. A 3D game. Okay. I would like to develop a 3D game okay from my laptop to your smartphone or your computer. Okay. How it's possible? It's possible to do it uh, because uh, it's it, it's uh, right now is Babylon. I don't know if you know this framework. Babylon is a JavaScript framework. With Babylon, I can develop a 3D game inside a browser, a web browser. So basically, tomorrow the games will be in a web browser. Okay. So me how it's possible to do that. Quiz. So me go. Okay. So maybe I have a game. Okay. okay. So if I am going straight, uh, me maybe to open this script. Uh, not paid coding for fun. Okay. So I'm doing. I know. I have no idea. Uh, okay. No, maybe. Okay. This. Okay. Yeah. Just to show you. Okay. Uh, this bad. Okay, uh, so Babylon, it's very, very easy. Uh, it's a JavaScript framework. So without, okay, without another framework, without a video, only with JavaScript, I can develop a web, uh, a 3D game. Really. Let me just try uh, if anyone. Okay, this is my game, Alien Push. I am pushing my game, so as you can see, it's, it's very JavaScript, so it's only JavaScript. Uh, I am pushing this game on my platform. Uh, application deployed, okay, not bad, quiz, so it's creating for me the platform. And we are testing together if the game is working well uh, on your smartphone, okay. Don't need services, okay. And right now putting the game, uh, to the World Wide Web. Suspense. Okay, suspense, suspense. Mm, so prodding, starting the application. So as you can see, it, it's faster than the, the Microsoft uh, app. I'm sorry if there is a Microsoft uh, customer or Microsoft uh, member, employees, maybe. I like you uh, guys. <laughs> so, it's starting the application. Okay, just need to wait a few, few seconds more. Okay, my quiz is deployed. Let me copy the URL. I am in my browser. Okay, you can see. And I am just pasting the code. So, up, perfect. So, remember, my application was a cloud native application, but very simple, with uh, a JavaScript framework. So it was JavaScript only, no flash, nothing. I uploaded to Cloud Foundry. Let me try. Okay, and launching. Okay, so be, now you can see my screen. Okay. Maybe it's, it's riding because my internet connection is it's not very, very fast, maybe. I am uh, I am traveling a lot, <laughs> and no more information. Uh, so the question is, uh, how can I play, okay, to this game? Okay, that's the question. You, you want to play to my game? Let me just click on create. And just focus, because it, it's very, very fast. Just be focused. I am still in the browser, okay? I'm in full screen mode, but I am in my browser. So I can move, okay? I move in this wall. I can move, okay? Let me just, because I'm sure it's, it's lagging. It's very, very smooth side. And I can show um, pictures, so, okay. But what I want is you are uh, testing this code. Uh, I want you to test this, this 3D application. 
So let me just click on this button. And now I open my screen. You can flash it again with your phone. You can flash it if you have the right application. Flash it to see this game inside your phone. Okay? Because that's the point. The point is uh, this game was on my laptop. And a few seconds later, I deployed this code to your phone. Okay? So just uh, take your phone. Okay? Or maybe if you want, I am pushing the URL. Okay? The access directly to uh, web to, uh, the tool. And let me just. Okay? So if you are looking for the URL, uh, just uh, check the chat, the chat part uh, inside the dashboard. So if you are checking the chat uh, part, you can just click on chat, uh, go to the quiz, and see if it's working well uh, from your side. Uh, basically, you don't need to set a question, okay? Just click on create, and you can play with the game, okay? So this game is right now in my Cloud Foundry platform, okay? So this game was in my laptop a few minutes uh, ago, and right now it's on your computer or on your uh, laptop, okay? And it was very easy because, as you know, remember this uh, webinar, you need to ask. So your application for developed a new application, you have to ask for everything, okay? So your application has to be smart, okay? Ask if you want to use, uh, if you want, I don't know, maybe to use uh, directly a database, okay? So you have to ask. Your application has to ask. Uh, I don't know if you, if you want to to know the URL, the data, uh, if you want to know if you have to create a new instance, okay? Uh, your application has to ask uh, for that. So, let me ask you, and you with this 3D app, okay? So the poll is open. Maybe yes, you can. So in this kind of, it, it's crazy because this application was on my laptop, so <laughs> from my laptop to your computer, it's, it's very, very efficient. Uh, as a developer, you can change the world, why not? So yes, a lot of people can play with it. Uh, some people can't, but they didn't try, so it's <laughs> that's, that's why. And thank you for the answer. Uh, no, I am not a gamer. <laughs> uh, I agree with you. I am not a gamer uh, anymore. Uh, but that's it. But no, just it's not a, a joke, you know. It's it just to, to explain. Uh, tomorrow, as a developer, you do don't need to ask uh, to someone something. Okay. Uh, as a developer, if you want to deploy, if you want uh, to sell a new game a new application, uh, you can do it yourself, okay? Uh, so that's the point. That's a very, very important point of this session is uh, now alone, okay? Without uh, no one, you, you can do that. So that's why it's very, very important for the companies, uh, very important for the IT manager, IT administrator to understand, uh, okay, if we don't have the tools inside the company, it's not a big deal. Okay, we can do outside the company easily. Okay, right now the power uh, is for a developer. Uh, okay, the power is back. The developer is back, uh, actually. Uh, okay, so I am done. Thank you, everyone. I hope uh, it was uh, not too slow, maybe with the internet connection. Uh, I hope you got some great information. And uh, go to, to the website. I said in the chat. And of course, I'm available uh, with uh, Twitter. If you have more questions, if you want more information, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, ask, ask me the question uh, with uh, Twitter. Okay, so I am writing down uh, my uh, Twitter account or using uh, just the uh, Be My App uh, account, of course. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Fernando, uh, for your uh, help and uh, your support. Thank you very much, Entian. Uh, guys, uh, Entian, thanks a lot. That game. I tried it on myself. It worked perfectly. And uh, I like how you made the maze or the QR code. Okay, uh, so now it's time to announce the two winners who are going to go home with the HP Cloud Box. Uh, so for this round, I've chosen, actually handpicked, uh, Diego Piachamala. I'm very sorry if I said it wrong. 
and instead of Estelle Abrix. So Diego, Gutierrez Mala, and Estelle Abrix. Uh, you guys could just email me, Fernando at bmyapp.com. And then from there, I'll send it off. Congratulations. Uh, to everyone else, do not worry. For webinar four and five, we're still going to be doing the exact same uh, giveaway. Just tune in, and at the end, we'll just pick out two or three. And with that, if anyone has any questions, let's just let me see. Yes, uh, so Etienne's uh, Twitter account is just Twitter at uh, first Etienne, first letter, the E, and then his last name, Quentin. So E, Quentin. And with that, let me just check the questions. Perfect. All right, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Once again, thank you, Intian, and have a good night, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night.